I said to him, I'll be back ready to play by April time. And he said, no, you need to understand you might never ever play football again. And I'm being perfectly honest with you, young man, you need to understand that you might die. My childhood was not ideal at all. My dad was in and out of prison. It was just me and my brother looking out for each other. Whether it was my mum going into hospital, at first I was too young to even like understand what was going on. So I would always look to Joe to sort of give me guidance. Unfortunately for my mum, at the time when she wouldn't have known, but by the time I was eight, she got sectioned and put on a psychiatric unit. Like we'd always like work together so well. So I'd assume that most brothers are like that, but I think because of our hardship, we've actually become even more close and we're like two minds, like thinking as one. We made our way up to Rochdale and to like Greater Manchester to, to stay with my auntie to stop us from going into care. They taught me so much as a player, but also as a man. They gave me like the foundations that they pride themselves on as a club. And uh, from the age of nine up until 15, it was, I was Joe Thompson who played for Manchester United. But then I found myself with nothing. And my old teacher said, why don't you go down to Rochdale? It's a stone's throw away from your house. I know your mum doesn't drive and you can walk to training. And I did that, but I enjoyed it. I was free again. I felt like I was able to express myself. I was performing and I was better than the rest. My partner, my wife Chantel was pregnant expecting our first child, Lula. And I just felt like it was time for a change. I was feeling strong, I was feeling fit. I got a few man of the matches and everything was rosy. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, it just hit me with, like a train. Some lumps popped up in my neck and straight away the club doctor sent me off to the specialist to go get a biopsy. I went to the hospital and spoke to the professor and he gave me the worst news that you could possibly give anybody. He said, you've got cancer. You've got Hodgkin's lymphoma and it's a cancer that attacks your immune system. I burst into tears and started crying and yeah, no, it was just, it's not a day that I like to really relive, but it's a day that I'll, I'll always remember. I said to him, so right, okay, so six months, and I'm pretty sure it was October 23rd. I said, so I'll be back ready to play by April time. And he said, no, you need to understand, you need to chalk the season off. You might never ever play football again. And I'm being perfectly honest with you, young man, you need to understand that you might die. And I was like, wow, like, you're just gonna say it like that? And he was like, I can not put it any other way, but there's obviously treatment and it does cure lots of people. And hopefully with a bit of luck, you'll be okay. We used to dovetail, but now obviously when he's the one that's ill, there's no dovetailing. So I knew that it had to be on me to, to be that rock. I just remember thinking every message that comes is just filling up the glass, a bit more positivity, keeping you strong and football fans from all over the world wrote to me and messaged me and I can never thank them enough for what they did for me. But yeah, I just remember thinking I've got an army behind me here and I'm ready to go to war. Cancer or me, it was only going one way, I was either going to die I was going to get over it and live on. For me, physically, trying to get back into football, it was so, so tough. Back at Rochdale, I was playing with my mates and I was enjoying the banter in the changing rooms. And it was just, yeah, I was on top of the world and I could also set my sights on achieving again instead of surviving. I 
was settled at home. Lulu was a bit older, she'd gone to school. Chantelle was doing well with her businesses and things were all right with my brother. And my mum was, everything was cool. It just came out of nowhere. I had a routine scan that I needed to do, which was going on two and a half, three years, just to pop in at the Christie's and just double check that everything was all right. And then the professor just said, we've just noticed a change from your previous scan since you've been in remission. So we just want to do another one to just double check. And then on Christmas Eve, he told me the cancer had come back. I was angry. I was very angry. I, I thought I've done everything. I've got over the, f it, the first time and I've worked so hard to get back to where I wanted to be and I was ready to kick on and try and progress in the game. I think you could, you could see there was something up um, because he actually com confided in myself um, and he said that the doctors have said to him to play on as long as he can and it, it come to like a, a loggerhead where I think we was playing away to MK Dons and um, we looked across at one of at, well at each other and I could see in his eyes that he was done as such where he couldn't carry on no more playing football. If I did everything right and I gave it my all, if the cancer beaten me, I could look my family and my friends dead in the eye and say I didn't give up, I just got beaten. So whichever way it goes, just know that I've given it my all. Just remember walking out of the hospital doors and there was a little breeze and a bit of rain and it came down and I was like, we're back, we're back on track, we're living. It wasn't long after he came out, I spoke to him on the phone, he was like, I've had to learn how to walk again. For me, the first thing I needed to do was rebuild myself as a man and then start to dream again of being a footballer. I was just thinking, we need to get ourselves out of this relegation fight, this relegation battle. We had Charlton and it was on the last day of the season, it had gone down to the last game of the season. It was a straight shootout pretty much between us and Oldham. It was nil-nil. And the gaffer gave me and Stephen Davis the nod to go on. And I literally said, he said, look, we need a goal. I said, just leave it with me. And four minutes later, thankfully for me, um, a good little nod down from Calvin Andrews in the box. I noticed I had a bit of time. And I shifted it onto my right, put it onto my left, which is my swinger and I don't usually use. And I just remember thinking, this is it. And time just stood still. I put my foot through the ball and it hit the back of the net. And it was just quiet. It was just, it was amazing. It was like I was soaring through the sky to a certain extent and I could still see it all coming towards me. The stand looked like there was a sea of blue coming down and then it snapped back, it came. I noticed the noise and I think for everyone at Rochdale and everyone associated with Rochdale, I'm pretty sure they've not heard a noise like that at the Crown Oil Arena um, ever. It was like mass eruption of emotions, not just because of what the goal meant for the football club, but what it meant for JT, because that battle that he'd on, undergone for two, three years of his life was put to, the, put to the side just for that magical few moments. It was just special beyond imagination. Going back into the changing rooms after it, the boys were buzzing. Um, we'd done it, we'd survived, and I think the ultimate survivor to a certain extent had made sure that everyone had survived and we maintained our League One status. For me, the book wasn't, it's not about me, it's about you can do it if you put your mind to it, no matter the circumstances, and just keep believing, and even when times get tough, just 
look inside and dig deep and find out what motivates you and what's going to drag you out of the hole.